What's going on? What's going on? I'm looking at my screen and it literally says I am the host. The host. <laughs> so I am live right now on vocal. Some people are watching uh, by way of uh, Facebook, hopefully. Others are watching by way of um, vocal, get vocal. This is a brand new um, thing I'm trying out. Uh, I still have no clue really what I'm doing with it. Just trying it out, trying to get a, a feel for it. Um, I'm hoping that it, it works out. Uh, I am streaming live on Facebook. At least I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure this out now. So bear with me as I uh, work out the, the kinks. And if this does work out um, effectively, I'll probably try to stream through YouTube as well. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to go live here and uh, just talk, just talk. And uh, I want to invite anybody else that would like to talk about this topic. Before, but before I get into the topic, let me introduce myself because you guys are probably like, yo, who's this guy? Who's Dre? So let me tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Andre Harrison. Friends call me Dre. You can call me Dre. I am an educator by day. I'm a third grade elementary school teacher. Um, uh, but I do have a master's in marriage and family counseling, and that's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about family. I enjoy education because it allows me to connect with students uh, that would also allow me to connect with students and build a bridge for me to connect with their families. So that's what I do. I'm, I'm really passionate about family and seeing families strong, seeing families flourish. Uh, I'm passionate about relationships, marriage, people living their life to the fullest. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I just enjoy life. I love life. And I, and I just want to make people, I don't want to say happy because I'm not really a people pleaser, but if I get satisfaction out of seeing people do well in life, like I'm one of those guys who is a, a natural cheerleader. Like I'm a, I'm that guy that, that will root for you no matter what you're doing. Like I'm in your corner, I'm backing you up, I'm rooting for you. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do with this show that I'm doing here on Get Vocal. This is my second show. And uh, I see two people are watching, thank you guys so much. I'm pretty sure before you wanna come and grab a spot, you wanna know what we're talking about. I'll get to that in a second. Um, so I mentioned that I, I'm passionate about marriage, family, and, and life. And um, one of the reasons why I'm passionate about marriage because my marriage didn't work out. And I believe in marriage very much so. Um, I believe in a union of marriage wholeheartedly. And uh, although it's disappointing that my marriage didn't work, uh, I didn't want others to fall into the same uh, situation or similar situation that I fell in without getting the support and the help that they would need and the resources that they would need to come out of it. So I went back to school, got my degree in marriage and family counseling, and I want to help families and marriages flourish. And um, every marriage is different, but I want to help people just live a nice life, relationships, all that good stuff, all right? So today's topic, how can we effectively communicate with the people in our lives? Now, this means um, spouse, family, mothers, fathers, siblings, children, coworkers, bosses, all that stuff. How can we effectively communicate with the people in our lives Today, we will talk about strategies that will help us speak up for ourselves confidently without freaking out in insecurity. Now, communication is a very tough thing, okay? There's people out there that really believe that um, they're, they're real, like they, they, they talk the truth, and if the truth hurts, so be it. So they're going to say whatever they want, however they want, and in their mind, they're saying the truth, and the truth hurts. Um, but a lot of times, they, they won't receive the same way that they're willing to give it out. I, I'm trying to get to the, the meat of all this about communication and what's really important in communication and even share some strategies that I've applied in my life, strategies that I've picked up in my studies that in my studies that have uh, shown through data to actually kind of work in uh, situations where we may feel like we're being steamrolled over or with doormats. How can we effectively communicate how we feel without freaking out? 
live in a day and age where we we go on social media and we see people communicating and everybody want to fight, everybody want to turn up in our movies and our TV shows. Everybody want to turn up. It, reality TV. Good gosh. <sighs> There's not an episode where glasses of wine isn't flying and people cursing each other out and and uh, and and people freaking out because they can't seem to communicate effectively. That's what really it is. People freaking out because they 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 are too emotional to communicate properly. Another example, prime example. I use this example all the time, right? Babies, babies, little babies. They freak out because they can't effectively communicate. They start crying and wailing because they can't effectively communicate their need, so they freak out. There's a lot of immature people out there. And I'm not saying this in a negative way, like, you know, I'm pointing people out and I'm, I'm, I'm coming at people saying that you, per se, are immature. Um, what I'm saying is there are people out there who uh, respond immaturely uh, when it's time to communicate and they don't effectively communicate, so they freak out. So today we're going to talk about ways that we can engage in conversation without freaking out. Still stand up for ourselves and not freak out. All right. So if you guys want, you're more than welcome to join me in the conversation, okay? Join me in the conversation, all right? Now check this out. A couple of strategies to help us communicate better. One strategy that I found that worked before I go there, let me just take a sip of my coffee. It's 8 o'clock in New York City, 8.06. I just want to take a sip of coffee. Yes, that's all right, right? Mm. Mm. Oh, before I go, I also have a podcast. It's called the Togetherness Podcast. Um, you can search it on um, Anchor. It's available on Spotify, um, Apple um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, a couple of other podcasts. Go there, subscribe, follow, listen to my podcast. This is brand new. I only have one podcast up. I'll be recording more. Uh, and um, my social media handles on Twitter, it's Andre um, D. Harrison. On Instagram, it's Andre-D-Harrison. Uh, yeah, look me up. Follow me, all that good stuff. YouTube, me and my kids got a YouTube channel, Harrison Family Vlogs. Check it out, subscribe, click the bell. It'll indicate to you that we have new videos or when we upload new videos so you can watch us, me and my kids. You got, you guys will love my kids, trust me. Now back to the topic at hand. Strategies to communicate better, okay? One of the things that we can do, and I'm, I'm giving you guys strategies and it doesn't have to go in, in a particular order. There's no particular order from first or, or most important. I'm just going to share with you guys some things that could probably help you communicate a little bit better with the people in your life. First thing I want to talk about, and it's not the first, but just the first thing I am going to talk about is before you engage in conversation, identify how you feel. If you are not ready to listen, then you are not ready to talk. We have to be ready. We have to be able to identify how we feel at the moment at the very moment when we're about to engage in the conversation. Because if we are in a heightened emotional state, we probably won't be in a position to listen well. And if we're not in a position to listen well, we definitely won't be in a position to talk well. You'll start yelling and you're not trying to listen to what the other person is saying. You're just going to keep yelling because you want this person to hear you. You got something to say and they got to hear you. Everybody has a voice and everybody should want to feel heard. That means the other person that you're communicating with also deserves to be heard as well. So if you're in a heightened emotional state, if you're angry, if you're upset, you're probably not in a position to listen clearly in a conversation. And if you're not in a position to listen clearly, you're not in a position to talk. If you're not willing to listen, you're not ready to talk. If you're not ready to listen, you're not ready to talk. It is what it is. And that goes for marriages business partnerships, um, boss, boss, employee relationships, children, relationship with your children. That goes across whatever uh, relationship barrier or relationship um, boundary there is. If you're not ready to listen, you're not ready to talk. Okay. So check your emotional state, identify how you feel. If you are angry, don't talk yet because you're not going to be ready to listen. Another thing is, listen to understand, not to react. 
a lot of married couples, a lot of people in general, but married couples, when they are in the conversation, they're listening so that they can react right away to something so that they can rebut what somebody else has to say. A lot of that has to do with pride because um, you have something to say. And if somebody else has something to say to you, you're going to defend yourself. You're not going to listen. You're not going to humble yourself to listen. You're prideful. I, I'm, I have been like that too. Pride kicks in. I don't want to hear anything they have to say. And whenever they do talk, I'm going to respond. I'm ready. Let Bring it. Let them come to me with whatever. I got something for them. So they say something like, you know, you know, you hurt my feelings when you told me that um, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I, I said it. You know, and you're too weak. You know, you're too sensitive. Stop being so sensitive. You see, if you respond like that, you're not in a position to, to, to listen. You're not in a position to understand how that other person is feeling. What's going on, Jada? It's good to see you. You're not in a position to listen. Uh, and... That's very important. You, when you when we com communicate, when we converse with somebody, when we listen, our goal is to understand what the other person has to say. All right. And if you're not listening to understand, if you're listening to react, I guarantee you, you will not win that conversation. Even if the other person is quiet, you're not going to win that conversation or that argument. A lot of times, hey, a lot of times, uh, and maybe Jada, you can uh, chime in on this. A lot of times when we um. When we think we've won a conversation, we think we won because we had the last word or the other person has nothing else left to say. So we think, oh, I won that conversation. The true evidence of a conversation or argument that's been won is if the two parties leave with a deeper understanding of the situation and a, a solid resolution of the, the, the conflict. If there's no resolution of the conflict, but you had the last word, trust me, trust me, trust me, you did not win that argument. That conversation does not have a resolution. You did not win that argument, okay? So when we listen, we have to listen to understand what, what the, the position of the other person or to see where the other person is coming from, okay? Uh, a third thing I want to mention is speak in a way that the hearer can receive and understand. Great communicators are able to communicate in a way that the hearer understands, Great communicators are able to communicate in a way that the hearer understands, all right? I can be the best communicator in the world. I'm not. I'm still improving. I'm growing. I'm, I'm developing that. But I could be. Let's say, for argument's sake, I'm the best communicator in the world. And I go to a country like Hong Kong, and I want to give this great speech. And uh, I go up there, and I, I recite this speech, and I say it so eloquently, right? I'm passionately speaking my my points are are solid. Um, I'm, I'm get, like I'm giving it all, but they don't speak a lick of English. You think I'm effective as a communicator in that situation? I'm not. I'm not. Sometimes we have to be able to talk in a way that the hearer can understand. We have to do that. All right, I have to. Like, you know, because we, 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 we'll be talking and we'll keep yelling out, "You're not hearing me," and the truth is they're not because you're not speaking in a way that they understand. All right. And uh, another thing, this is uh, um, something I really live by. This is actually a scripture in the Bible, Proverbs 15, 1. Look it up. It says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stirs up anger. This is um, profound to me. Uh, I heard a guy talk about this once, about how um, people are, pe resisting comes natural to people. And every time I, I go and I speak about this topic, um, I find the biggest guy in the room, like a person that could probably bench press me like 20 times, right? And I ask him to put his hands up. And what I'll do is I'll put my hands on his hands. And without telling him, I'll start to push him. His natural response is going to be to push back not so that I won't push him back. He'll He'll offer up just enough resistance so that he's not pushed back. I've done the same thing with women. Right, the smallest woman that I can find in the audience. And the same thing happens. They will resist so that they're not being pushed back. All right. One way we can combat that is how we approach somebody. Soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stirs up anger. If we respond in a way that's, um, I hate to say the word delicate, but for a better choice of the word delicate, people will be more apt to listen to what we have to say. 
All right. If somebody is at a heightened level, one of the best things you can do to bring them down is not to go up to their level and try to talk over them because they're going to keep trying to talk over you. The best thing you can do if somebody is up here and they're like, you know, get loud and not hearing what you're saying is to talk a little bit lower. Just talk a little bit lower and try. You may not believe me. Just try it. Talk a little bit lower. If you are in an argument with your spouse, try it. If they're yelling, just talk a little bit lower. But not in a um, that type of facetious, sarcastic way where, because we can do that in our, to our spouses. We know exactly what buttons to push. And you say, I'm not going to hear you. I got nothing to say. I can't hear you. You're not going to yell at me. Like Just to be, I'm talking about like in a real way. See, if somebody's yelling and just respond, you know, I really want to listen to you. I really do. But I, I, I can't respond to you well if you're yelling. And just keep it at that level. They're not going to keep yelling. They're going to bring it down. Okay? That way, both parties in the conversation now has an opportunity to, to receive and to listen. But if I'm yelling and I'm yelling, I'm yelling, and you come at me and you're yelling at me, I'm going to yell even more, which is going to cause you to yell even more, which brings that scripture into to, um, reality. Harsh words stirs up anger. So now we're stirring each other up in anger. And we're not getting anywhere in this conversation. So a soft answer will turn away wrath, but harsh words stirs up anger. Try it. Try it. Another thing that we tend not to do, which will probably be helpful in a, a, a conversation, um, especially when uh, we feel like we're not being heard, how we can speak out without flipping out, freaking out, is to try to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. Let's try to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. That's trying to understand the world that the hearer is in so that we can um, alter what we say so that they can understand and receive what we have to say. We tend not to do that. We have something to say, and we're going to make that other person listen to us. But if we try to figure out their, me their current mental condition, their current emotional condition, put ourselves in their shoes, we'll be able to gauge whether or not it's the best time to have the conversation or what approach would be beneficial for both of us to, to engage in this conversation and come to a peaceful resolution. This way, I don't freak out. This way, I don't freak out. I'm not, I'm not one to freak out in conversations. I'm able to get into debates, have deep conversations and disagreements and not freak out, but some people are not able to do that. And it's not something that I... Uh, was born with. I had to develop this. I had to keep reminding myself that a soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words turns up anger. I have to keep reminding myself that if I want to understand what this person is saying, I really need to listen to what they're saying and put myself in their shoes and vice versa. Hopefully they would um, repay me that same respect, which leads me into this uh, word, empathy. When you're talking to somebody, try to empathize with what the other person is feeling. A lot of people, when they do talk, they want the other person to empathize with them. Just do it. Empathize with what the person is saying. It reminds me of the movie White Men Can't Jump, right? Where uh, um, Rosie Perez was in the bed with uh, Woody Harrelson. One second. I'm thirsty. And Rosie Perez was like, I'm thirsty. And um, he gets up and he gets her water. <laughs> And uh, it's like, it's typical for men to, most men to uh, try to meet an immediate need right away of the, the women they love. But he got her water and she was like, I don't want that water with that high pitched voice or whatever. And she was saying, you know, I don't want you to have sympathy for me. I want you to empathize with me. I want you to feel thirsty, which I, I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> I thought it was, a f <laughs> I, I just couldn't understand what she was trying to say. That's like, there's no way Woody was going to win that argument. Because it, it, it was like, you want me to feel thirsty for you? But when we empathize, we try to connect with the person's feelings, how they feel, or how I made them feel. So let's say I'm in a, a situation where I've offended somebody. They came to me, and they told me that I offended them, and then they told me how my offense made them feel. A lot of times, we can get defensive right away and come back with something. But, but... If I want to be effective in communication and I want to win this argument where both of us come out on top with a deeper understanding and a conclusion, 
I'm going to empathize with them and feel what they're feeling or try to at least. That's one of the, the main keys of active listening is empathizing with the person who you've offended or who, have, who, who said that you've offended them. Okay. Empathy, I believe, is a superpower. I really believe that empathy is a superpower um, because um, not everybody practices empathy well. Even me, I'm growing in that area. I'm trying to to, to not just um, be judgmental of people, but really, really, really try to understand people's circumstances, how uh, people feel in those circumstances, how I make people feel. And it's uh, not being a people please. It's, it really is just putting yourself in the shoes of somebody else, showing maturity and really teaching yourself how to engage in meaningful conversation uh, with where both people can come out on top, especially if there's a disagreement. This way, you're not freaking out when you have to speak up for yourself because we all have done that in the past. We all turn up. You ever been on a line at the supermarket or at a, a store or whatever and somebody cuts you? Our first response is, you know, I feel disrespected. They're about to get my, my either these hands or I'm about to tell them off, right? All right. But what now, this is a crazy extreme, but what if we ap approach it this way? Uh, excuse me, um, I was in line. Are you in a rush? If they say, well, yeah, I'm in a rush. I have somewhere to go. Okay, well, you know, um, you could have just politely asked and I probably would have let you go. But you cut me and I found that very inconsiderate of me and everybody else that's online behind me, okay? You can do me a favor. Just next time when you're in the store, and you in a rush and you feel the need to cut somebody, just ask for permission. We're all adults here, all right? And I'm pretty sure that we would understand your situation, especially if you were in a rush. What if we had that kind of dialogue with somebody who did that to us? Many times I feel disrespected, I'm about to turn up. You know, you start calling your cousins and, and your auntie thems and your uncle thems and all that stuff, trying to come to the store to turn up because somebody disrespected you. You know, that's how we, live, right? That's the, the most effective way to handle situations. It's not, but that's how we do. So let's start communicating intelligently, effectively with two people. Well, absolutely, Jada, come on in. Absolutely. You could just grab the spot there. Um, just so we can engage in conversation and, and, and not freak out, or you can get engaged in conversation and not freak out. Yeah, yeah, Jada, you could just grab any spot that you want. You click the, the grab the spot and come on in. All right. Uh, and another strategy I have. When you feel yourself getting upset, ask to take a break for a few minutes. Take a break. Take a break. Cool down. Count uh, backwards from 25 to, 10, to, to zero and just cool down. Because if you know you feel yourself getting to a place where you're about to um, explode, try to have enough control over your emotions where you can say, this conversation is not going anywhere. I'm getting upset. We're not close to a conclusion. Let's take a break and revisit this in like 10 minutes. Let's go get a drink, cool down, and then come back. It's all like, it really is like a lot of, a lot of the, the issues that, many of us face is communication is basing on on negative communication or poor communication we think that communication is just talking listening is like one of those secondary things we do when we communicate it's like um i i i'm i have something to say and i want you to hear what i have to say Period. I, I don't care what it is. You're going to listen to me and uh, and you're going to let me say what I need to say. And I'm going to say what I need to say, however I want to say, whatever way I want to say it, you know. So, um, yeah, Jada, come on in. I got some comments. Hey, Lorraine, what's going on? Uh, if they understand true, Latasha, thank you for your the, the support and the comments. Yeah, it's something that we had to learn. And you know what, Latasha? A lot of us aren't born with that. Like a lot of us aren't born with, you know, none of us are born with the, the, you know, or with ways to to communicate effectively. I guess as we grow up, as we mature, these are things that we develop 
But communication is a big part of life. Communication actually is one of those things that separates humans from every other kind. Like, in fact, some 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 species communicate much better than humans. Like, we get too emotional. You know, I have Jada come in, and I haven't seen Jada in a while, man. man Jada's been off of the social media for a minute. What's up, girl? Chilling, chilling. It's good. Uh, thank you for uh, telling me about this. Like, this is definitely it feels like blab days. So yeah, yeah, for real. yeah, for real. It's been a a minute. What you been up to? Um, a lot. I feel like so when we last uh like engaged and everything, like that, it was just like so different. My life was so so different. Um, yeah. so I don't you know, I'm back and forth from like Atlanta to, to New York. So I kind of go back and forth quite often. I got married. Um come on, like things are just so different now. You know, I was in my twenties, yeah. like it was just different. Yeah. So yeah. it's a little different now. But yeah, our life's good. I mean, I can't complain. So yeah. Yeah. With you, how are the boys? The boys are growing. Um, my twenty. 20- Guys, my 21, I have a 21 year old tomorrow for starting tomorrow. Like my my oldest is turning 21 tomorrow. Oh, I feel like an old man. I feel like an old man, like 21. And your birthday's coming up because I remember you and my dad have the same birthday, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, December 10th. Uh Monday. Monday's my birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting I'm getting old. I'm trying to Love. um trying trying to stay young. Well, or young-ish. I, like, I, I, I'm at that point where I want to be a little bit more older, distinguished, um, mm-hmm. uh, and rel- relative, you know. Uh, but I don't want to be, like, you know, young. You know, I, I want to be, yeah, you know, like, I don't want to be young. Like, I'm not trying to be young. I'm not trying to be cool or do what the younger ones are doing. But I still want to be relevant, in a sense, you know. Like, I know yeah. what I'm talking about. I know where you're coming from. Yeah, no, I see you. I feel like I've always, I've always said I feel like I was born later in life. I feel like mm-hmm. I feel, the, I feel like I should have been born a decade prior to like the year I was born. I've always said that. Yeah. I been, like yeah. I grew up in the eighties instead of being born in the late eighties. So I feel yeah. like I, mean, I feel yeah. like it's an amazing thing. But even when I talk to like older people, I always say that mm-hmm. I, I wish I was my age, but still with the experience and the wisdom of someone much. You know, like to have mm-hmm. knowledge, I think that that definitely comes with age, comes with time, comes with experience. So mm-hmm. to get that and still be a certain age, I think it's a, you know, but I think getting older and wiser is a blessing also. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I wish I knew now, you know, I wish I knew back then what I know now. Like if I could have my, my 20 year old self with my 39 year old brain, I'd be straight. Me. I, Be straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I always say the same thing. Like, what? If, so many things, you know. But that's life. You live and you learn. You mm-hmm. go through experiences. And you move forward. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah. So, how, how how was the husband? And how's Atlanta? Good. Good. Um, it's so different than New York. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I've been traveling a lot. So most of the time, I don't even feel like I'm in Atlanta. I feel like I haven't really experienced, even though I got here last year. Most of the time, we'll go away and we'll be away for like three weeks in one city, and then we come back for a few weeks, and then we're somewhere else. So um, it's yeah. been good. So I can't, I can't really complain. It's been good. That's dope. That's dope. But what do you think about the communication topic? Oh, yeah. So that's why I wanted to jump on because um, yeah. you know, communication. Okay. So communication in general. When I remember having topics very similar to this on my radio show back in the day. But um, when it comes to communication in a relationship, it's extremely important. And I like what yeah. you said as far as communicating effectively, because that is the key. Mm-hmm. I think that's, a, that's to all relationships in general, whether it's a family relationship, a regular friendship, a romantic relationship, it doesn't matter. Communication effectively is extremely important you know we could communicate and we could not sometimes you you won't be able to hear the person you know because 
most of the time you're not speaking the same language you're not each other it could be for so many reasons where one party is not getting through to the other and vice versa or even both so it's just yep. <clears throat> communicating effectively yes so i agree with yeah. that when it comes to um communication yeah like a lot of a lot of um issues that people face whether it's a, a relationship marriage friendships um mm -hmm. co-working relationships a lot of it um has to do with a breakdown of communication you know and and i think if we can communicate better and listen a little bit more um and that's everybody because it's, it's hard like one person may be willing to listen and the other person is not that's still a breakdown in the communication process as well if everybody could just listen and and try to understand and then respond with understanding think be so much better relationships could could be a lot more smoother you know and, and then like and at that point you can make a, a conscious decision to say you know um let's say if it's a severe situation you can say you know um after having this conversation i think it's best that we um uh, eliminate our uh, connection yes. our communication and then go our separate ways in a peaceful manner you know because it's like um couples who get into nasty breakups they don't talk to each other well they're arguing and then they go out and it becomes extremely nasty and ugly and and a lot of that has to do with the breakdown of communication you know this isn't working out uh and uh we don't get along we're not compatible uh asking questions like is that something that you agree with give them an opportunity to say their piece you know and if they do agree say you know that maybe this isn't the best situation for us in co-working relationships um you know, uh, we had this um, project due and the deadline is tomorrow. We're supposed to work on it together. Um, I did my part, um, but you didn't do yours. Like, you know, why are you, why are you killing us? Or you can approach it with, you know, is there anything I can help you with so that we can make sure that we can meet this together? Is there something that you're going through that um, I may not know that I can help you with so that we can finish this together? See, things like that helps create positive you know, environments for people, but a lot of people don't look at communication like that. You know, they want to say what they have to say. If somebody is late with a project, say that again. I'm saying, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, but also just like how you said, like it's the way you say it too. So you said people want to, you know, like deliver how they want to and it's their way, but um it's the delivery as well. So you know it's what you're saying, yeah. it's also how you're saying it, how it's being delivered mm -hmm. that someone could receive yeah. it. The complete opposite from your intent you know yep mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that's cool yeah yeah um like so how 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 do you approach like conversations or disagreements and things like that because i'm extremely mindful of myself yeah. um yeah. i which is also something that we have to do yeah we have to be able to know ourselves yeah, yeah. that's that's definitely important Right. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that I'm extremely mindful and I'm self-conscious about a lot of things when it comes to communicating with people. And because I'm a really aggressive person, I have a really aggressive personality. So I know myself and I know I could come off a little strong or a lot of strong. Right. So uh, <laughs> that being said, I try to make sure that when going into maybe like a sensitive topic, no matter who it, it is, right? Like just, I was with my mom the other day and I had to have a sit down with her. And, you know, I just, I knew going into it, it was just like, you know, like kind of just like kitten gloves, I should say, you know, cause it's my mother. So, you know, and depending on who it is, you want to be, you know, sensitive to certain things and depending on the topic. So me knowing again, knowing myself, I'll go into um, starting a sensitive conversation. I'll just kind of maybe start off with, I don't know, like an example. Um, I think of something off the top of my head, but yeah. me knowing myself, I just, I'm super conscious of my delivery is and how I yeah. word things. Cause I know words are really important. And again, depending yeah. on how it's delivered, someone could receive it the incorrect ways and person that's trying to, you know, like their intentions are. 
So, because I never want to, I never want to get my message or the point that I'm trying to get across to get misconstrued. So, yeah. I'm always really mindful of myself when you know entering a conversation with someone. Yeah, yeah and that's a fear that I have. Um, it's like um, I I don't like it when what I'm saying gets misunderstood. Yes. I don't know if it's a fear. It's more like a, um, I would call it a pet peeve. Um, I, I really don't like when what I say is not understood or or what I say is not being repeated back to me exactly how I said it, right? Yeah. So I make sure that I'm careful with what I say and how I say because um, intent is important, but not a lot of people um, look at intent when they, get, when they engage in conversation. They look at what's said and the mannerisms behind uh, how somebody is saying it, you know. So it's like I could say, you know, what? I love you, uh, right? Or I could say, you know, what? I love you. It's one of those. It's it's the same exact thing, but now this the first way I have to like, okay, I, I don't know, like, is it really? I like, do you really love me? Like, I I didn't feel that, you know. But the second way, if I say it that way, so you're saying the same thing. Now I have to question your intent. First one, the first way I said it. But the second way, I don't really have to question that intent. Uh, and I, I just, I don't want people leaving the conversation with me, um, not understanding me properly. Like, I don't like to be misunderstood. So I try to be careful. And then every conversation I have, I'll say something and then I'll ask, um, how does that make you feel? Yeah, that's good. Or uh, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? You know, if not, I would like to clearly, you know, say it. So... That's big, big, big for me. Yeah. Big or, for me. Yeah. And but those are good follow-up questions. I know one of the other mm -hmm. questions I'll probably say is just like, well, what did you get from like, you know, the point that I was trying to make? I'll ask questions yeah. like that. And then depending on what they say, then that's how I'll respond. But yeah, like follow-up questions I think are really good and important because then you know where mm -hmm. the other person's head is at, through the way they receive the information that you were trying to um, deliver. So yeah. Questions yep. are good. Yeah, that's cool. Like, so there's some comments on Facebook. So um, off the topic, real quick, uh, this platform is amazing so far, and they, they're still developing. So um, it's very similar to Blab. You, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Are you broadcasting on Facebook too? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yes, yeah, broadcasting live. So people, I have like two screens here. I got, I got. I should let you see it. So I have like one screen here where I'm looking at the comments on Facebook, uh, and then this this one here. Nice. So I have like, I definitely have more people watching now on Facebook than on the actual yeah. vocal platform. So get vocal is still fairly new. Yeah. Yeah, still very, very, very new. Mm -hmm. And um, if you remember before, hmm? I said it's in its infancy stage, so. Yeah, and you remember before um, the 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 the, um, the cover page of Blab, there was like hundreds of shows. Everybody was hosting something. Okay. Every which was also good because everybody was able to establish their own communities. Like you and I was able to connect with so many other people, and we formed our own community on Blab. Get Vocal is the same way, but it's brand new. Yeah. Except Get Vocal allows for people who are broadcasting the opportunity to, to live stream both on YouTube and Facebook live at the same time. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. So it's not just here. It's not just here. So um, it really is a, a real good platform to, to reach out to your audience, to connect, yeah. engage in deep conversation. Um, I, you know, remember how blab the blab was like even more just a, a place where we can just get on and just talk about, nothing and talk about everything you know yeah. you were up you know two or three o'clock in the morning just getting into deep conversations with you know you know 20 people at a time it was great it's not there yet like mm -hmm. so intense i remember always like tweeting i was just like why am i up till 3 a.m on like on the rock because that conversation <laughs> yeah. was that intense they, they were really good and they were intellectual conversations 
So they just, yeah. even though like there were moments of just talking about nothing, but also about everything, just like you said, it was still stimulating because you were able to talk to so many people from different backgrounds, different point of views, you know, um, and it allowed that it was that platform that allowed that. So, you know, to, to see it go was, you know, hurt, hurtful, but also now this is created. So that's awesome. So I'm glad that yeah. there's another form that is just, uh, similar also it seems like it's going to be better so yeah 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 i wonder if they're going to start charging though because um, i don't know because okay, well you know sidebar this is like my first day on here so uh, oh it's your first day yeah 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 it's my first day oh, so, okay. all right I'm, I'm still like looking around and literally it was like a few hours ago and i was like oh i need to make sure to just come in on you know like your broadcast so yeah. your support so yeah I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm not going to stay on too long, um, but uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I really do appreciate it. So, I'm, uh, this is a like real dope, dope format. Um, yeah, people. What's that? Hey, Auntie Karen, how are you? <laughs> what happened? I said no. I said it looks cool so far. I like you know, like the interviews yeah. and stuff like that thus far. Mm -hmm. And it's so. This is the only thing that I was just like. I'm wondering how it's going to grow. Like, you know, I'm, I'm curious yeah. to see how it's going to be in another, like another, like next six months because of the fact yeah. that it's like so exclusive. Like you have to have an invite. You can't even like look for yeah. friends. I'm like, what mm -hmm. is this? Like yeah. you have to like catch them in order to even just add someone. So it's like really mm -hmm. like hush, hush. So it's just like, okay. You know? well, I, what I can do is um, I'll, I'll tell you how you can get, so you can start broadcasting quicker. Um, I got to send you uh, the email of the person to reach out to. Okay. This way, because so once you tweet it, did you tweet it yet? Yeah, I did. I tweeted it. That's why. I, okay. I mean, I could broadcast though. Oh, yeah, yeah. They already allowed me to. Oh. Right. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Your data. I forgot, <laughs> Mr. Lopez. I forgot. Oh, you know, Lopez. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, All right. I'll cool, probably cool. like uh, do like a, a show, maybe like over the weekend or something like that. When I have all right, let me know the time. I'll make sure to, to be on so I can yeah. uh, support as well. But I really appreciate it. Oh, not, no problem. Like, and I enjoyed the um, the topic. And then I was mad that I missed your first uh, your first broadcast. Oh yeah, yeah. That was that was like a um, a uh, yeah yeah filling it out the pilot to see how I was going to do it. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, so dope. So I'm gonna do this every Thursday at eight o'clock. Okay, so this that's gonna be your like your time slot. Yeah. Okay. Every Thursday at eight o'clock. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm right. glad it was good. we were able to connect again. Yeah, me too. I saw a few other people that like from Blab, and I was like, but on like different other um, like broadcasters. Um, yeah. Shows. I was like, oh, and I was like looking at replay, and I was like, oh, like I missed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, and hopefully we can get that. That community of people together again. Exactly. I felt like it was a community yeah. that we were all able to just kind of like link up. We had, you know, like was like minded people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I miss those days. But yeah. But now we have this. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see how it's going to grow. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. All right. Well, nice chatting with you. We'll be in touch and I'll, I'll hit you up outside of this. Yeah. So we'll be in touch. yeah. Don't be a stranger. We'll have a good night. I won't. All right. All right. You too, Jada. Later. All right. I'm about to end this broadcast. Thank you so much for those who are watched, who um, tuned in on Get Vocal. And for all my people on Facebook, I appreciate it. A couple of ways you can continue to stay in touch with me. Um, you can hit me up on Instagram. I think it's at uh, Andre.D.Harris. Uh, Let me just make sure because um, I, 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 I rarely give out my Instagram handle. Uh, I'm always on it, though. But I'm going to tell it. Give, yeah, Andre underscore D underscore Harrison. You can hit me up on Twitter. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Andre dot. No, Twitter is Andre D Harrison without anything in between. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Andre D Harrison. And also you can hit me up on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash reality dad TV. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll be live again next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I really appreciate you guys again for, for watching, staying in. And, and please, if you took, if you uh, leave with anything,
today, please leave with this, that a soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stirs up anger. If you really want to be able to communicate effectively, you have to be willing to listen with understanding to be able to talk afterwards. You cannot talk without listening and you can't listen without, well, no, you can listen without talking, but you can't really talk effectively without listening first. So please listen first, talk after, gain understanding. And uh, yeah, practice these steps and hopefully your, um, your skills in the communicating will grow and be a little bit more effective. All right. I'm Dre. You just wrapped with me. I'm signing off. Everybody have a good night. God bless. And, and Oh, wait, before I forget, my podcast, Togetherness Podcast, Togetherness spelled T-W-O dash Getherness Podcast. You can find me on Spotify, Apple, um, Google Podcasts, and a couple of other formats. So you can check me out on, on those as well. All right, guys, have a good night. God bless. And until next Thursday, peace.